Hey, what's going on guys? This is Coach Chase, DFW Penguin Basketball. And today, we are going to talk about, as you can see from the title below, what are you going to do when you have a really bad head basketball coach or just a coach period that you have to answer to and they're not particularly qualified for the job. Now, all of this is subjective. But there are more instances that are a lot more severe than others, okay? Sometimes you have a coach that is totally incompetent. You're in, let's say you're in the seventh or eighth grade and they have no idea what they're doing um, with the sport that you're playing, okay? Um, meaning they don't know how to conduct practices. And a lot of times you can learn this or learn what's a good coach and a bad coach from you playing for an extended period of time, playing with other coaches that were a little bit better before this coach. So I'm gonna give you, it's really only two options. One, okay, the easy way out is quit or move on to another team. That's the easy way out, okay? Or it may be the best way out depending on your situation. If you're at a school, you grew up, you came up from you know, second grade, kindergarten, all the way up through, and now you're a sophomore, junior in high school, and you're playing for this coach, and there's nothing you can do about it. Your family's not going to move. Um, it's not a big enough deal for you um, career-wise in your basketball career to change schools. Um, so what are you going to do? You can quit or possibly transfer to another school. That's an easy way out. Or number two option is rough it out, tough it out, do the best you can with what you have, okay? Um, guys, I've had coaches to where, you know, not even, I'm not, and when I'm speaking on this, I'm not talking about my role on the team is bad or I'm not getting enough playing time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, your coach, you may start on the team and play a lot, but he's just really, really, really bad. Now, another thing within staying on the team that you can do is, if your basketball cue is high enough, once you get in games or you're at practice, you can coach the team on the floor. What I mean by that is directing them in the right place to go in between timeouts or walking out on the floor, off the court, communicate with teammates, hey, I see this, this, that, another, which is something that you should already be doing. But I'm pretty sure if you have a bad coach, okay, other team, other guys on the team know this, and you guys can come together not to talk bad about the coach or or degrade the coach or, or put him down or anything, but figure out a way that you guys can come together and try to do better as a collective, especially the guys that play a lot of minutes, okay? And what I mean by that is now, if the coach calls out a certain play, or he calls out a certain defense, you have to go with that, but there are ways to go around and thread it a certain way to make things a little bit better, okay? Um, I had a really bad coach at one point, and um, this is one of the things that I did myself. Uh, there were certain plays that didn't work, and um, late, in the, late in the shot clock, I would I communicate with some of my teammates like, hey, you know, forget this motion offense. If we can't score, we can't get a good shot. It's ball screen time. Late in the game, it's ball screen time. Now, you run the risk. I ran the risk of being taken out. But luckily, at this time, I was one of the better players on the team. And the stuff that we did to change certain things worked out. But you have to understand that you have run a risk of your coach being upset with you, taking you out, things of that nature. Just make sure when you make that risk that, one, you and your teammates have a uh, – you guys have a bond and understanding that it shouldn't get out or, or, you know, to other people about what you guys are doing. And whatever you're doing, whatever adjustments you're making, they have to work in the game. Also, you have to balance listening to this coach that probably is going to give you a lot of mistakes, okay, cause your team to make a lot of mistakes. You have to balance that out and also balance out doing your own thing and helping things better. So. So, recap, real quick, I just want to do a quick video on this because I know a lot of you guys have um, situations where you might have a really good team, but the coach just doesn't know how to lead you guys the right way. It could be middle school, whatever, high school, varsity, 
who don't want to go against the coach, okay, and you need to respect him, but at the same time, you will have to make in-game adjustments and stuff to give yourself a chance, especially a lot of coaches that aren't good coaches, they're bad late in games, managing games late. So you guys, if you guys have a collective uh, you know, a uh, group of guys that understand basketball a little bit better or shit damn near as much, damn near as much or a whole lot better than your coach, okay, you guys can put something together to make things work a little bit better for you. You can't change the whole dynamic of it and you shouldn't try to override or overrun your coach, but little game, in-game adjustments within each other should help out a whole lot. But you have to have guys that are on the same page as you and understand the game just as well or better than you, you or the coach, okay, for this to work, all right? You have to respect them, or you can just quit or transfer. The choice is up to you. That's pretty much it, man. Comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Keep flying.